Hi, Adam Bazalgette here, founder of Scratch Golf Academy. Today's subject, how to square the club face on a driver. Show you some different thoughts and ideas and drills. We'll look at both leaving the face open and closing it too much. And I'll also give you a couple of mental tips that I think will really help you do this and not only help you do this, but anything you're working on in golf. Well, very briefly, if you're new to the channel, maybe you've watched our videos before but have never subscribed, we'd really appreciate it if you do that. Helps us build momentum, bring you free content. Hit the little bell there as well. Be notified every time a new video is coming your way. So what is squaring up the club face? Well, it's closing it. It's getting it to back to the square position. Now in this video, we're going to focus more on the people that struggle with slicing. Certainly at the beginning of the video, they don't close the face enough. Towards the end, we'll look at people, some people less commonly, close it too much and hook it a lot. Is the grip important? Most certainly it's important. The way you hold it affects your ability to square it. This isn't about grip, but generally the more you grip it over here, to the back side of the shaft, the easier you can close it. Let's have a look briefly at a pro, two other factors that would be in very, very important in squaring the face, then we'll get out and do a drill. Well, there's Rory McIlroy about to pound the ball out there, no doubts. One of the things he does, of the two we'll notice, is if you look at the, say, the width of the swing as judged from the club shaft to the hat, you look at it at the point where his left arm is there, and you look at it early in the downswing, Oh, we'll call it probably right there. I mean, it's just unbelievable how much more loading of the shaft and how much narrower the downswing is than the backswing. And of course, corresponding to being able to load the shaft is being able to release the shaft. So what you'll see, his body makes a good dynamic start there, and then it actually starts to firm up. Watch his lower body, particularly his lead leg, right about now almost appears to stop for just a portion of the swing. I'm not saying it has stopped, but he reduces body speed down around the ball and snaps the whip. And when you crack the whip like that, it is a lot easier to snap those hands over. Now we're talking about squaring the club up with the driver. My driver's right there. Grab a hybrid. That's the first club I want you to look at. And before you do that, just hold the club in front of you. Familiarize yourself with the feeling of closing it. What does that feel like to you with the grip you have? Here's the drill. Once you've got that feel, it's going to help you feel what we saw the pro do there a minute ago, transfer energy and snap that club. I'm going to take my right foot, put it almost behind my left foot. Fairly precarious balance kind of find my distance from the ball and just hit a nice smooth shot, gonna feel soft wrists and what you'll find, it really freezes your body to stay balanced. You're going to get a heightened sense of how that club snaps past your hands there, transferring energy. Let's try it again. Now, if your balance isn't that good, hey, you could go a little wider, stagger it back, something like that. If you're really a bit of a star, you can almost put it behind that. I'm not gonna put myself in that category. We'll go about here. Again, let the wrists be soft and notice the release of the golf club there. Great way to start to get the feel. Okay, mental tips, a couple of them here. Number one, if you want to build a subconscious skill, you want this as a, the squaring of the club face to be pretty much at a subconscious level. Now, let me just preface, if you've got out of bounds or water or something, say all, down, all the way down the right hand side, you've got to feel it a little bit, you've got to fight that thing, you can't just swing and hope you don't hit it over there. But in the main, what you want is subconscious skill and to get that, you have to play around with stuff a little bit. Overdo it, underdo it, don't always try for neutral. That's a mistake I see most players make. They're always trying to hit a dead neutral shot. There's not enough experimentation and playfulness there to get them the kind of feel that allows them to feel neutral subconsciously. Great book by a former PGA teacher of the year, a real star in the industry in the teaching hall of fame. I'm lucky to count him as a friend and a mentor, Mike Hebron, Play Golf to Learn Golf. You might like that book. Second mental key, and this is a pitfall I fall into still, I've certainly fallen into it a lot over the years. Once you've rehearsed something a little bit, what you're trying to feel, you're familiar with what you're working on, don't make the dreaded mistake I think most people make is as they swing, the conscious mind kind of jumps in and gives you a reminder and says, don't forget to do it. Once you start spiking the swing with these little mental conscious reminders, thinking too much, your timing will not be any good. So rehearse it, get the feeling you need, Hey, I'm aware of what I'm doing. Your subconscious isn't going to forget what you just told it to do in three seconds. 
just quiet your mind down. What your mind should be doing, your conscious mind, it should have already given the command for whatever you're working on. It should be just quiet and noticing what actually shows up, getting feedback in other words. You get these two mental keys right, not just squaring the face, all the different skills in golf, going to be easier for you to do. Just a quick word of caution before we move on and talk about players that hook the ball too much. What are their problems getting the club face square at impact? And that is, if you're struggling with solid contact, good balance, those sort of things, if it's just a mishmash and mishits, don't worry about direction and squaring the face so much. You've got to get those reasonably in place, decent balance, decent flow and contact, then you're ready to get back onto this. Look at the pros, for example. Uh, they certainly hit it solidly pretty much all the time and they hit it a long way. For them, those are so in place, they're always pretty much working on direction. That's what goes wrong with them when they don't play well. But for the rest of us, got to make sure we're hitting it well before we start on this. That was a pretty good one, actually. Next, let's look at the person that hooks the ball. Now, typically, this is your low handicapper. They've got plenty of distance, but they throw in a couple of these big quick hooks every so often, gets them into trouble. And usually what happens, the hips actually get so active and fly out so far in front of the arms, they have to excessively slow down and there's too much release, too much hand action. So let's have a look at a pro, the one I believe, at least my personal opinion, exemplifies the fix for this, the best, love this golf swing, show you what we're trying to do, then we'll get out and do a little drill. Well, the incomparable Sam Snead, winner of 82 PGA Tour events, seven majors, just one of the really all-time great players. So let's have a look. What is he doing so well, other than pretty much everything? He certainly leads with his lower body. It's very dynamic. He loads the shaft. I mean, that shaft's over here on the backswing, and it's obviously a lot closer to him on the downswing. But what he does so well, I think, he really keeps that right side held pushes weight down into the ground, gives him that trademark squat a little bit, but for all the dynamics, he keeps his lower body pretty well supporting his upper body as he goes through there. His hips don't just completely fly out there, and once those arms are down in the slot, watch, let's say, his belt buckle now. Watch, he can really give it some spring and a bit of push there. Certainly the club's releasing, but he's got enough thrust right there where he needs it to really give him some control over his release. Okay, a couple of keys here that'll help you feel some of what Sam Snead was demonstrating there. Again, if you're in this category, go to the top and do some drills where you get this trail arm or both arms, if you like, to pump down and get those hands over here more in front of your body. Now certainly I'm not suggesting the hands lead the downswing. You'll see as I do that there's a certain gripping of the ground and squeezing down a little bit. It's dynamic but you're the sort of golfer if you're in this category wants to get the hands down more and then you can really get that body moving and explode through there. Lots of little drills like that pump, pump, swing would be great. Things you're looking for, you want the general sense that it's your body turned down at the bottom that is squaring the club up, not your hand so much. And I think if you do these things correctly, if you get the arms down and then your body can really activate a little bit better through the ball, you will find as well that you have a little bit rounder arm swing on the follow through. You don't want a big high finish if you're fighting the hooks. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video. Hope this is helpful to you. Appreciate all your support.